It is Tuesday, December 2nd, 2003, and this is the beginning of an interview with Walter Zinke in the Historical Society Cottage at the Westbury Memorial Public Library. Mr. Zinke is 86 years old, having been born on December, December 20th, 1917. My name is Susan Kovarek, and I will be the interviewer. I am representing the Historical Society of the Westbury and an official partner in the Veterans History Project. Mr. Zinke, would you state for the recording what war and branch of service you served in? U.S. Army World War II. What was you, your rank and where did you serve? I served, my rank went from private to technical sergeant to warrant officer to second lieutenant, first lieutenant and I served in Camp Upton, Fort Benning, Camp Fannin, Louisiana Maneuvers, Brooklyn Army Base, France, England, Holland, Belgium, and Germany. Were you drafted or did you enlist? Yes, I was drafted. Well, I wasn't actually drafted. They had a number, picking out numbers out of the fishbowl, and I had a very low number, so I decided to enlist and get my year over with because my friend and I had to discuss it, and we wanted to get married, but we thought we'd rather have the year over with first. At the time, I was living in Glendale, New York, I picked the, I didn't pick the branch as service, but I went to Camp Upton and I stayed there for three and a half years. I recall my first days of service because we were living in tents at Upton with little coal iron stoves to heat the, and it was very cold, very cold. We had our basic training right in Upton, and then I did it again when I went to OCS later on. I feel I was very fortunate because while I was at Upton, we, we had been married by then, and my wife and I could live out there off the post. Where did you go from Camp Upton? From Camp Upton, I was being replaced by the 1A handicapped people at Upton. So in 1943, I applied for Austin Kent State School at Fort Benning, and I was accepted there, and after 90 days became a second lieutenant. Did you go someplace else after that, when you were a second lieutenant? Yes, when we graduated, we were assigned to various camp replacement camps. I went to the replacement camp in Fort Benning, in Camp Fannin, Texas, and from there, would be, I, went, I joined the 84th Infantry Division in the Louisiana Maneuvers. We stayed in the Maneuvers for about two months and then the division was quartered at Camp Claiborne, Louisiana, and we stayed there until we were ready to go overseas, which was about a year and a quarter later. Where did you go when you went overseas? I was with the advance party for the division. We went, we landed in Omaha Beach and were stationed at a town called Boulogne, France. But somehow or other, the, 
division was, whose destination was France, was diverted to England. And so we were called back to Barton Stacy in UK. Um, what was the date that you landed at Omaha Beach? I'm just trying to get the year here. It was about 40 days after D-Day. So you were sent back to England, and uh, what happened there? Where did you go from there? We were stationed there just until we got vehicles, and after a month, in England, we then returned to France and immediately motored right up to Holland. And we stayed in a town called Herbeen, Holland. From there, I was called to, I was the first, I was lieutenant of the 4th platoon of Company G. 333rd Infantry Regiment. And the night before we were to go into battle, I got a call. They needed officers back in division headquarters. So I was taken back there to, as the division classification and replacement officer. That I did up there, and the unit fought their way to the roar and over the roar, and when we were just about heading to go into Germany, we were called down to work in the Battle of the Bulge. In the Battle of the Bulge, I had an interesting assignment of getting the hospital returnees and the replacements to their various units but the situation was very fluid, so nobody really knew where the units were, but I succeeded quite well, and the general presented me with the front star for the process, and also gave me, a, raised my rate to a first lieutenant. What, what happened after, after the Battle of the Bulge? We stayed in the Battle of the Bulge for about two months, and then we were sent back north to where we had come from, and then we proceed, proceeded to the Rhine, and on the way to the Rhine, we liberated one big town of, we had, there were many towns I should have bought a record of them, but when, when we got to the line, we cried across that, I think it was Wessel, and we crossed the line, and then we began our campaign in Germany, which went forward rather quickly, and we were headed straight for Berlin. But the one big town between us and the Elbe River was Hanover. So our division had the privilege of liberating the town of Han Hanover and also a uh, camp where they had put the Jewish people in a Dachau, I guess they call it. What was the reaction of the people in the towns that you liberated? Most of them were very pleased to see us. In fact, they were so pleased that the army had a non fraternization policy just to keep the troops in line. What was your impression after liberating the, the camp, Dachau? That was very disturbing to see all those people who were just about skeletons 
and they, of course, were extremely happy to see us and our medics. From there, we went to the Elbe. Some of my units crossed the Elbe, but then President Roosevelt had given that territory to the Russians, so we had to come back on our side, but we did meet the Russians there and congratulate each other. Um, what happened after that? Was that was near the end of the war now? Yes, that was, well, I'd say a, a month or two before the end of the war. And after the end of the war, our division was stationed in Heidelberg. And that area. And I became the troop redeployment officer in charge of sending the, in charge of the people who were keeping the records for sending the people back home. Most of my army experience has been pushing people around in the reception center at Camp Upton. We pushed them out to the various camps on the Air Force down in the that was the Polish and other, and prior to that, we returned the hospital, we took Chinese to the units at the fillers to the units that needed men. But I was, but the most popular man when I was sending the troops back home. After I had quite a number of points and I had five years service and my wife and child were in the States, so that helped my point total. So before the division came back, I went back home with the 67th Division. And while there, I was made assistant adjutant, and I joined the adjutant general's department of the Army. And that's about the story of it. When you came back to the United States, you were made this uh, assistant adjutant general? No, during, during, while I was with the 7th Division, I was assistant adjutant general. Then when I got back to the States, I was discharged at Fort Dix and released. And we had our physical exam and I the only defect they found in me was I had an un unhealed ulcer on my lip, which I think came from a shrapnel burst, but it wasn't recorded in the med medical aid station because people there were having their arms and legs reattached, and I wouldn't go, go for just a simple stretch. So I got no purple heart, but I do get a compens disability compensation. And you said you had a wife, your wife was here in the United States while you were overseas, and you had a child also during that time? Okay. Um, so when you came back, uh, what did you do after that? Uh, did you, what, what was your job and, and that type of thing? Well, when I first went in the Army, I went in for a year, and after a year I was discharged. I got a job then with the Pennsylvania Railroad, and a week after I got that job, Pearl Harbor occurred. So on December, no, on January 5th, the sergeant that I knew out of camp up and said, better get yourself ready to come back because the orders are in the mail for you to report tomorrow. And that was when my wife and I got married that night, January 5th. And then she stayed with our mother in Glendale and visit, visited me several times, once in Louisiana and once in Fort Benning. But after before we went, before I left Camp Upton, we had a 
house that we rented out in Bayport, which was right near Camp Upton. And I could make a daily compute. It was like going to a job in the office. You said your wife was able to visit you when you were here in the United States. Now, um, did, how did she communicate with you when you were overseas? Did she send you letters, that type of thing? Yeah, she sent many letters when I was overseas. And the only trouble was you didn't get them for weeks, and then you get six or eight at a time, which were, was nice. But in the meantime, you wanted one news. And she had the same problem because I didn't get to write as much as she did, but I did my best. When you came back after the war, did you go back to the Pennsylvania Railroad or did you get another job? No, I went to Pennsylvania Railroad, but they didn't really have an opening, so I got a job with J. Aaron and Company a coffee merchant down on Wall Street. And I stayed with them for several years. When did you move out to Westbury? We moved out to Westbury a couple years after I got out of the service and bought 11 home on April 1st, 1947 for $9,990, which has really appreciated since. Now you said you worked on Wall Street for a few years. What, what did you do after that? After that, I went and became a c controller at an engineering company, Cisco and Hennessy at 139 East 44th Street in the city. And among the notable things we, our firm did was build the World's Fair, Rockefeller Center, Lincoln Center, and the other, many other large projects. Did you stay with them until you retired, or did you do something else? No, I was with two other, com two other engineering companies as controller. One Howard Needles, Tavern in Bergendorf down at 39 Church Street. They were builders of Jersey Turnpike, L-I-E, and all the big roads in the city because we had branches in all, all over the states. And finally, I went to Meyer Strong and Jones and another mechanical engineering company, and I stayed with them until I retired. How many children did you have? I had one child, but four grandchildren. Do your grandchildren live around here? Well, one grandchild who just graduated from Finmore is spending a year in Japan teaching the Japanese children a second language, English. My second, my, the next, the other, well, one of the other two girls, Henley, is with the Ton group of companies that make bags and dresses. My other, my great, my only grandson, he was teaching English and, and writing down at Johns Hopkins, and he also edited the Hopkins Medical Review. And my very girl, whose name is Sandy was working out California with disabled women and battered women. And she has now come back to the city here to, uh, well, before she did that, she spent a year 
John Hopkins also doing similar to what her brother had done. Now she's in the city trying to locate another job because she wants to be with the rest of the kids. Do you belong to any veterans organizations? Yes, I'm a member of the DAV and a, a charter member of them and also a charter member of the 84th Division. We are splitters. Uh, are, are they active groups that do things, uh, a lot of things? Oh, yes, the DAV does a lot of transporting of, of vets to hospitals. And the 84th Division has annual reunions located in various cities of the United States so that everybody gets a chance to attend. So do you get to see some of the uh, men that you serve for? Unfortunately, they have, the ones I knew that went to the reunions have passed on and we don't see them anymore. So I, I don't attend the reunions too frequently, only when it's convenient. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, except we've been very happy in Westbury here for many years. Since, since April 1st, 1947. So this coming year it will be 57 years, I think. Yes, that's it. Okay, thank you very much for allowing me to interview you.